like to do is make gaming easy. Er. That's why today I'm going to do this beginners to advanced heroic scorched tail Helion training. Now lately when I've been going into the heroic patrols and the heroic plus patrols, I notice guys leave when they see the scorched tail. Kinda like when it's Boris and uh, Koshi. Now I get Boris, not really Koshi so much. He's kinda flippable in my opinion. That's just my opinion. But the Scorch Tail Helion, yeah, he's a bit of a jerk. He does things in a disrespectful way. It's like a volcano and a T-Rex had a baby. And this is what we're left with, a fire spitting meanie. Now when it comes to his moves, he doesn't have that many weaknesses. He doesn't have any easy interrupts. He spits fire and vomits lava. A lot of lava. He has a suicide drop with a slide quick attack head charge and a driving head charge. The quick one hurts more. He's got a very, very deadly volcano attack and his tail, mm, a lot of people say his tail is tied for the deadliest tail in the game with the uh, Rezuka or Rezugul, uh the giant white dragonfly. Now his tail swing, which hurts, it comes back. So you're gonna have to dodge that thing twice. He has a tail uppercut and his most deadliest tail or full body move is his full tail body smash. This thing is just vicious. And when he's angry or aether charged, you gotta keep in mind his tail swing has a full 360 degree, well actually it's more, more than 360, more like 390 for a hundred degree circle attack. Now I mentioned his fire and just moved on like it was something you just need to watch out for. But remember, the fire status is one of the worst statuses in this game. Especially on the heroic difficulty. There's a good chance you might be dead before I'm done complaining about how bad this status is. But before we deal with the fire, there's a major decision you need to do first. One, are you going to stay away from this tail? Or two, you going to try and pop it off? Neither is an easy task. Now one, if you're going to stay away from the tail, it means you want to stay to the sides and the front. Now you're safer, but you're not safe at all. You still need to watch out for all the attacks that I just finished mentioning. When he starts slamming, you start running, and I mean away. His reach is scary long, not to mention the waves that come out afterwards, it's kinda hard to dodge. Now, like I mentioned before, his tail has a 360 plus attack circle, so you're still gonna need to keep an eye on that damn thing. Now, if it's number two, your goal is to get rid of it, you got some risky work ahead of you, but it's well, well worth it. Because once you break this tail off, it's a slightly different behemoth. Now, for this, you want to think like a boxer, not the dog like a human boxer. You want in and out, side to side, back and forth, bob and weave, whatever you want to call it, the strategy you need. You want to attack his tail right after he finishes attacking you, then get the hell out of there. Or you can stay in dodge if you know his attacks well, but it's safer to run away. Now, this might take a little time, but it's going to work, and when it works, it's gonna be really worth it. His swing circle is laughable once his tail is gone, and he doesn't do the body slam anymore. It's just gone. It's great. Now that we've chopped off some of his most deadliest attacks, we just need to keep an eye out for fire. While more than an eye, fire and lava is everywhere. I could simply say don't step in it, but it's everywhere. So molten heart drops, these will really help. What they do is they keep you invincible from fire and give you a speed boost for 15 seconds. Some tough firearm is a good choice as well. But honestly guys, in my opinion, the best choice for this behemoth are these two fireproof cells. And once you get to plus six, you're invulnerable to fire. This is what you need. The burning effect, like I mentioned before, it sucks. Especially when you're going for one of those molten heart drops and someone scoops it right in front of you and you accidentally run into a puddle of fire. That sucks, but it happens. Now the volcano attack, this has a little bit of timing involved. You're gonna run, you're gonna need to wait for at least one second and a half before you dodge. Now my best tip is to run away, but not straight or directly towards the behemoth. You wanna run in a way where you can go up or down, left, right, east, south, whatever you're doing, you need to make a turn and then dodge. Now when it comes to weapons, you could always use the repeaters and stay out of the mix, but to be honest, the way his patterns are, there's a lot of chances to reload at the right time. You could be empowered for a good chunk of this fight 
and still be useful. Now as for in and outs, the Warpack's a good choice, as long as they're comfortable with the behemoth's attacks. So are the axes. He's got a really big head, it's perfect for throwing something like an axe at, right? Now I'm throwing my Pangar axe, but I have the Relentless Onslaught mod on. I got this from the Trials. Now how this works is, the first time you throw it, you're going to get a bonus damage of 500. Now if you catch that axe before it hits the ground, you got 5 seconds to throw it again. And then you can get a bonus 600 upon your normal damage. Now if you catch that axe, you get you can throw it a third time within 5 seconds for a bonus 1000 damage. Now this is base or bare minimum, so it's going to be more than that. So you can keep your distance with the repeaters, you can be in and out with the axes and the war pikes mid-range, but if you want to get real close, any ice punch glove fireproof combination is going to work perfectly. You have to be really, really comfortable with his attacks though, because you are literally going to be in the hot seat. So make sure you're 100% fireproof. But like I mentioned, he's got a big head and these weapons are good for staggering guys. So it's a good choice for this behemoth. Alright guys, now when it comes to knocking this guy over, this is kind of important. This applies to almost all the behemoths. There are two types of interruptible attacks. There's the unstable attack, which is where you see the lines on their face, and this is when you knock them out. They hit the deck. It's great. Very satisfying. The other time are interruptible attacks. The best way to explain this is, when you think of the quill spike, and he's on all fours and he's shooting his quills up, that's an interruptible attack. So if you hit him hard enough, no matter what you got, if you guys hit him hard enough, he's going to fall over. It has nothing to do with the stars that's on his head. It's just that attack is interruptible. The Helion doesn't have unstable attacks, but it lives in interruptible attacks. You can knock him over whenever the hell you want. You just need to always push on his legs, back, head. Just remember, stay away from his tail. Now when it comes to builds, the build that I made for this fire source lava no hold on I think the worst one would be burnosaurus rex well, that's what we're gonna call it so when you're making burnosaurus rex builds this first one here is just for fire defense and molten heart drops but we're gonna get rid of that very quickly because the second one is to show exactly what I was talking about before with if you bring the right cells to make you fireproof you can bring different armor and bring different armor effects to this hunt once the armor is strong enough for this battle, of course. Now, you could bring, say, wound armor. Now, once your behemoth is wounded, any slayer, including you, that hits that spot does bonus damage. And you just made that spot. So what if you pick a Nausicaa-type weapon that does bonus damage to wounded spots? Like the wounded spot you just made. You have a 100% chance to hit that thing. Plus, most of this damage in this build is pushed over to stagger so all that damage is going to help knock them over and they mean the gang can play pile on this is what you want to do and that's it guys on that note i really hope this has helped <laughs> if it has join the team of killers become a killer of teams let me know what you're thinking in the comments it's the only way we can talk keep it easy and remember just keep gaming <laughs>